Today we're at the Bay Street Passive House. We're three blocks from the beach and we need to make sure that our waterproofing assembly is bomb proof. Let's take it away. Anytime you have a house made out of wood and water, you have problems. As we've talked in previous videos, anytime you have water and a carbon source, meaning wood and uh, air, you have the potential for mold. And we make sure that when we build a house, it is bomb proof. The waterproofing details are by far the most important part of any project because it, in no uh, uncertain terms, most of the damage in construction to houses is from water infiltration. Either water from the outside through windows and doors uh, and leakage around those through uh, the roof, either at penetrations of the roof or even plumbing leaks inside the house. And so we make sure that when we're building a house, we build that house so that water can never get into that project. The Bay Street Passive House is the best in practice for that uh, assembly. And we're gonna go over the specific assembly today in this video. So first of all, we've talked previously about the waterproofing and air barrier within this house. And right now it's behind this uh, rigid insulation, but we have this mock-up. So when we have that waterproof assembly, that airproof assembly of the Intello membrane that's stuck around the entire house, and we've gone through the whole house and done a blower door test, we've made sure that there's no air leaks and no water leaks in that project. Then we come to the bottom of the wall and we pull this uh, and we put, take this uh, material. Now this is a galvanized sheet metal. We've actually made sure that this galvanized sheet metal doesn't have lead as we talked about in previous videos. And we're making sure that this galvanized sheet metal is designed so that this thickness addresses the entire thickness of our assembly. So that means it's gonna cover the insulation, it's gonna cover what's called the rain screen, which is this assembly, and then it's gonna have enough space to have the siding on the outside. Now this, this uh, flashing does multiple functions. First of all, if we go down here below, it's, it's attached to the bottom of the house. And then we use a tape to attach this, uh, well, we use screws to hold this in place. Then we tape the top of it so that any water that potentially got past all of these assemblies above wouldn't, wouldn't get behind here and cause rot against the house. So we're putting this in here and then it's, screwed to the structure of the house. It is below the level of the floor framing, which means that even though this is metal and we would love to use a non-conductive material uh, because heat will go in this space, in through the metal, and then we'll go into the house, bypassing all of the insulation that we're putting around the or house. So after this flashing goes in here, uh, we're gonna put the insulation on top of that and we're gonna screw that uh, <clears throat> we're gonna screw that insulation to the house. Now, we've used these screws here and these screws have this big washer right here and this washer holds the insulation against the house. Now there's not that many of them here and the reason is this is just intended to hold the insulation against the house before we put this uh, structure right here because this is actually the structural portion of the house. This piece of wood which is screwed to the walls through big screws like this every 24 inches is going to hold all of the weight of the siding. Now there's a whole lot of work that goes on before we put this, uh, this piece of wood here. And we term this wood as either the rain screen or the sleepers underneath the siding. And so what we're gonna do is we're doing things a little bit differently. Now in a normal assembly, when we have a siding that goes on vertically, we have to have horizontal pieces of wood to attach that siding to. If we had vertical pieces of wood and these sleepers went vertically, we could only fasten them when these get fastened to the studs. So every 16 or 24 inches. And on an old house, the, the studs inside the walls are not even. Lots of remodels and things like that. And so you'll have kind of an irregular manner at which you have to put this siding on. And so if you could only screw in to the, where the studs are, your siding is going to look really bad. And on this house, we're using what's called a board and batten siding. And so that siding is vertical. So we have to run a horizontal piece of material. Now, if our siding is, and we're just going to use this piece, if our siding gets attached like this, we're going to put a screw through here and that screw is going to go into this wood. Now this wood is strong enough to support the weight of our siding. This is not the siding. 
Uh, the sighting is very heavy and big, and so I'm not going to hold it up here. But it's not going to support the weight. Uh, I mean, sorry, the screws are going to support the weight of this uh, of this of the siding into the wood, and the screws. We have big screws that go through the siding, through the insulation, into the studs of the house. And so that connects the siding to the structure of the house. And structural engineers have to specify that because there's a lot of weight in siding on a house. And that structural engineering diagram is gonna define how often and how many screws we have and how far apart these sleepers are. Now, if you'll notice, there's a space behind the sleepers and uh, there's another membrane on top of this insulation. So this insulation is waterproof, but we have gaps between the panels that we're going to caulk and we're going to foam so that they're air sealed, but they're not strong enough and, and really com I'm not confident enough in that to make sure that water never gets to the inside of this wall to where the waterproofing and the air sealing is. I want to make a bomb proof house that I never have to worry about as long as the occupants live here. And so what we're doing is we're taking this waterproofing material. Now this is a different waterproofing material than you, we saw on the plywood of the house. And it's a fairly cheap material. You can buy this at like one of the big box stores. But what this would do is any bulk water that got through our siding got blown through this gap. So there's literally a three quarter inch gap between the siding and where this foam starts. And so any water would, that got through the siding would literally have to get past that gap and it would, not, it would fall. I mean, gravity is going to take it, so it would fall. But just in case, if there was a strong wind or something and a big hole in the siding, water would hit this and because this is waterproofing, it would also fall down. It would fall down through here, it would fall down through this gap and it would come out here and then it would drip off the edge of this drip edge and onto the ground never getting anywhere close to the wood portion of our house. Now, how do we make this gap behind this uh, sleeper? We actually use this material, and this material is called chloroplast. Now, chloroplast is the same material that you see for like um, signs that you see in, fence, in uh, yards for political groups or candidates. Um, this is a specific heavy duty chloroplast <clears throat> that we're using, and we put it behind the wood and because it's so heavy duty, we can put it behind the wood and then we screw through it and it forms this channel that allows us to have water go directly down between the wood and the insulation. Now, we've also uh, are going to put tape on top of the wood and tape on the face of the wood so that any water that got through the siding and landed on here would not start to rot this wood sleeper. And any water that got between the siding and the wood sleeper would not start to rot the wood sleeper. So we're making this assembly so that basically over a hundred years, water is never going to get to this wood or to the structure underneath, making it a fairly bomb-proof assembly. Now, one of the things that we're internally trying to do, and this is a fairly recent evolution of our organization, is we are trying to eliminate what are called red list chemicals. And red list chemicals are chemicals identified by the Living Future Institute, which promotes the Living Building Challenge, to get rid of all materials that have toxic chemicals. Chemicals that have been shown by science to be toxic to human and animal and plant life. And this material may actually be PVC, and I haven't tested it, and we're actually developing a tool that we're gonna make available online that will allow anybody to take all of the materials from the MSDS and input them into this tool and then it will tell you if they're red list chemicals. And so we're gonna take this material, if this material is made out of polyethylene, we're fine. If it's made out of PVC, then we're gonna to have to find an alternate source of this material that doesn't have PVC because we don't wanna be putting toxic chemicals into the house or out of the house because the fastest way to make sure that you never have toxic chemicals in the house is to never put them in the house. So this assembly, if this was the siding, would be the forever assembly. Water is never going to get in here. We have this two and a half inches of insulation, this poly iso insulation in this wall, meaning that this assembly will last for the life of this house and certainly for the life of the occupants. This assembly does cost more than just putting your siding directly on the house, but really it's the bomb proof assembly and 80% of our projects are now using this assembly to make sure that they never have to deal with water leaks. If you're interested in learning more, about the Bay Street Passive House or about building science in general, please hit subscribe as we show you 
how to build a better way.